Hey folks, Matt Sharp here with another fishing video from Pacific Angler. We're out in the field where we do all our casting practice, but right now, obviously, you might not be able to make it outside. And I wanted to share with you guys something that I've been doing at home to keep my fly fishing skills on point. You can actually practice a bunch of different fly casts indoors, whether you're in your living room, whether you're stuck in a small space. And today we're going to look at a cast that is perfect for tight spots, and that is the roll cast. We're going to teach you guys how you can practice it right now stuck in your living room so that you guys can be better prepared for when we can get out on the water in a socially responsible fashion. As always guys, you want to see more fishing videos like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let's get into casting indoors. Okay, so first off, casting indoors, we've got to go over what you need, and you don't need much. Quite honestly, if you follow along with this video with a ruler or a pencil in your hand, you're going to gain a bunch of muscle memory. But if you can rig your rod, why not? Now, a couple tricks for that. What I want you guys to do is if you've got a lightweight rod and then a heavier weight rod, let's say you're a trout fisherman and maybe you do some salmon fishing, you probably have an 8 weight and a 4 weight. What I want you to do is take the reel from your eight weight, string it up on the top two pieces of your four or five weight. That's gonna overload the rod to let it bend a little bit more. And in these tight spots, that's gonna really help simulate what a real rod is going to cast like. Now, if you're lucky and you have one of these, this is an indoor casting rod. I'm gonna be using this for the demos, but note that you can totally do it with that lightweight rod rigged with a heavier weight line. Even if you only have one rod, you can still do this. You just know that you're going to have a little bit harder time loading the rod up so it's not going to zing. It's not going to fly across the living room quite as fast as if we could overload that line just a little bit. So the first thing we're going to look at is the fundamentals of the roll cast. And I want you guys to stay tuned for this because even if you've done roll casting before, it's going to really help you understand what our good roll cast is. And where I took this from was I'm a spay caster at heart. In its essence, spay casting just is a glorified roll cast, but if you've got a single hand rod, a lot of those skills you're going to take from a spay cast are going to apply to those single hand casts as well. And the first one is called the D-loop. You've probably heard this before, but I can't stress it enough, is when you raise up the rod, and now I'm going to do everything cack handed because I'm in a tight spot. We'll talk about that in a sec. I'm going to come across my body and I'm going to load up what is called the D-loop. This is the D-loop here. And when we look down at where it touches the ground, our goal with the D-loop is to have enough weight here stuck to the water down below us that when I make my stroke forward, it's going to bend the rod. Now, if you guys are using that two-piece of your four-piece setup, you're going to look at this, and the bigger the D-loop, the more bend you're going to have in the rod. So when you do your lift, what I tell people to do is point at your target, shift your rod 45 degrees to whichever side, either this side or this side of your body, and then slowly raise up the rod and stop. I want you to stop at about a 45 degrees off your backhand, and I want you then to look over your shoulder. Look at the D-loop. I can't stress this enough. I always love to have a glance at my D-loop to look at it and understand what's going on there. Now, the more line you have in that D-loop, I'm going to throw it back out there, the deeper you're going to bend that rod. The less line you have in that D-loop, the less you're going to bend the rod. And so you're going to have to apply your power to that to make the cast happen. So once we've built that D-loop, we're going to look down, make sure it's stuck, make sure the D-loop is built here. Then look up at your tip, make sure your line isn't wrapped around your tip. That's a beginner's trick, and I know you advanced guys probably have that nailed. But doing a quick little checklist of water, D-loop, line tip is really really critical now for hand position i am a arm caster i've got really girly girly wrists so i don't have strength in my wrists so i tend to use my forearm and my bicep in all of these casts it doesn't particularly matter depending on what works for you but the d loop and the way the rod flexes is universal we need those things to happen to make the cast work so once you get up there what i want you guys to do is visualize a canvas in front of you a painting sitting up on an easel, maybe 40 feet 
out. Obviously, if you're stuck in your living room, that's probably only 30 feet. I don't know how big your guys' living rooms are. For mine, it's like 20. But I want you to visualize a canvas out there. And I, what you want you to do with a rod tip is I want you to splatter paint on that canvas. You get to be a kid again. Think of the time you took the paintbrush and splattered paint on a wall, splattered paint on something. I'm sure most of you at some point in your lives have done that. Your goal is to put all the paint onto that canvas 20, 30 feet out in front of you. And so it's going to look like this. You're loaded up, you're ready to go, and you're going to flick paint at your target. That's going to allow the rod to unload and shoot line out in a given direction. What I would say to you guys do in the house is I want you guys to practice working back and forth over maybe a 40 degree span of doing these roll casts. Load it up, check your stick on the water, check your D-loop, check your rod tip, pick your canvas, and then fire your direction. Now, you're going to notice that very quickly, whether you're going left to right or right to left, that it can cause issues. If you guys are trying to cast and you're casting off your good shoulder and you're casting that way or anywhere over there, it's easy. But the second I try casting over here, I'm gonna have problems. And that's just the way the physics of the line works. And so you want to be able to do this cast off your good shoulder as well as your off shoulder. I was demonstrating that off my bag shoulder because you guys are here in front of me in the camera and that's called cack handed casting. There's actually a very funny history lesson in cack handed casting. It has to do word with khaki and wiping your butt with your left hand. Look it up, it's mildly entertaining. But cack handed casting is a spay term that means coming off your off shoulder. And so if we are casting, I'm casting right at you guys and I'm gonna cast anywhere over there, I need to come off my cack handed shoulder, build that D loop, look at my tip, ready to go, versus me coming off this side of the body, going towards this side, I can come off my good side and build a loop that is going to be behind me on my good side of the rod, like this. Again, I'm gonna look at the stick, whether it's on the desk, whether it's on the floor, it's still going to work. I'm gonna look up my rod tip, I'm gonna make sure I have a good D loop formed. I'm gonna pick my canvas out in front of me, and then I'm gonna to try to flick paint like a shotgun that's gonna only hit the canvas, not down, not up, and out it goes. All right, guys, that's the first episode of Casting Indoors. A couple tips are put your reel back into its reel cozy while it's attached to this two-piece section. The reason for that is you are inadvertently going to stand up or move around, and you're going to bounce your expensive reel off the hardwood floor in your living room. So put it in there, you won't regret it. Also, in the thumbnail of this video, we use a real fly. That's just for the picture. I want you guys to use wool. It is way safer and way easier to cast to simulate this whole thing. Right now, I want you guys to take 10 minutes and pick your living room apart. Set up some targets. Set up some goals of things you want to hit. But I also want you to work really hard on the transition between your good shoulder and your cack handed shoulder. If you can make this second nature in your living room, it's gonna pay massive dividends when you're out on the water. I want you guys to get both of these concepts, the D-loop concept as well as this transition concept really nailed because I've got a number of good videos coming out soon that are going to build on this. Ones that we can do in our living room that are going to take us to the next level. The first one is going to be a drop cast, which is actually a trick cast, but it's one where we cast out, roll cast out, flip the line and have the fly land in our hand. Now it is just a trick cast, but if you can hit your hand in your living room, imagine what you can do out on the water when you're pulling back a fly or you're dropping a fly in a different spot that you need around you to set up another move. We're gonna go over that in the next video. So if you wanna see videos like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. If that video is out on the drop cast, I'm gonna link it up here. And if not, I'm gonna link our 10 minute double hauling video up here, cause that's another really good one you guys can do in the house right now. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope everyone's safe out there and we'll catch you in the next video. There goes my reel. <laughs>